smoke when we all celebrate success. So now we. Hey guys, finally got an update for you. I know it's been a while. <laughs> so, these are what's left. There's one on each side. The remains of an outer CV. Basically I put those in to protect the wheel bearings while the vehicle is uh, in storage and being moved around between panel beaters and garages and things. I finally stuck the drive shafts in so these things could come out and this was basically just to stop the wheel bearings from collapsing without anything to uh, sort of keep them together. So there's the drive shafts in place. You'll see I fitted the new brake booster master cylinder and I've also fitted the new hard lines. And that's basically to start lining things up for what's going on down here. So I've done a bit of a mock-up for you. And I mentioned in previous vlogs that uh, in order to use this new booster, there's a number of additional bits and pieces that need to go in. One of those pieces being this. So this is a brake distributor basically it'll take the feed from the master cylinder down this will go to the front brake uh, calipers and this will go to the rears so this is basically how we're gonna put them together I started mocking up and uh, you, you can't see it in this light I'll see if the camera light will show it so basically these marks here I used a punch to sort of mark where I need to drill so I can do a pilot hole and uh, basically I need to expand these out in order to get the rib nut in before I can actually use the insertion tool and create a, a sort of a captive nut in the uh, lower part of the wing. So that one's kind of where it needs to be and this is how we're going to do the... Uh... Let me turn the light off here. This is kind of how things are going to be. I'm going to have a, this is a 5mm bolt, small washer, small washer, nut, oversized washer, riv nut. Now the riv nut doesn't look like this when it's in the car. Uh, so this perforated edge here, camera light, still not off. There. Focus. There. This will collapse once I use the uh, insertion tool. And that'll basically bring this 6mm nut up almost in line with the lip here and that's basically it I'm gonna have the two I haven't decided yet so the one needs to kind of go in this orientation and the other one would need to go upside down which means I need to do a couple of weird right angle bends to get this sorted but what I could do is stick one almost flush mount against the wing so that'll be using this oversized washer and then the, the normal size wash on the inside just to kind of space it away from the body because it's already the, the rib nut already has this flared uh, you know sort of top here at the, and that'll uh, give it a, a few mils maybe three mils clearance the bottom one I was going to use two nuts to sort of stack them so they'll be staggered so that I don't have to do any crazy right angle bends um, that probably is going to be the way I'm going to do it We'll see tomorrow. Um, I was meant to get stuck in here. I've been working in the vet practice tonight. We've been doing a major upgrade to security, so I've been really, really busy. And I've also unpacked and repacked the network cabinet in there just to make things a bit neat and label everything. So, yeah, this is kind of where we are. Um, I know it doesn't look like much, <laughs> um, but I've been saying for ages I need to finish up in the engine bay. Yeah. So, this is the other. This is the other braided brake line in the front. So yeah, I need to get this all done so that I can, I can finish up. I'll show you what I've been doing on the inside. But we're making good progress. I've got the bends pretty much. This is still loose because I'm still busy there. But you'll kind of see this will be stacked side by side um, with the bottom one sticking out a little bit further than the top one just to allow um, the two to be stacked next to each other. And that'll kind of almost work out exactly how I'm envisioning it. So now these are the old brake lines. So now I did mention, I've got them here. I've got new, okay, I'd have to do a lot of bending to get them to fit in my vehicle. Um, but I've got new brake lines, new hard lines. So what I'm 
planning on doing, and I'll take you through what I've bought early in the week in a second. Let's open the box for now. So this is basically the brake line flaring tool that I've bought. Why would I need that? So what I'm going to do, once this is done, that should be done tomorrow afternoon, I may or may not have time to film it. Um, sometimes difficult to work constructively and film at the same time. But I might slap the GoPro on my head and, and see <laughs> if it works out. So once that's done, I want to take a, excuse me, I'm just going to climb into the bay so I can show you more clearly what's happening. <clears throat> Scotsman powered Volkswagen. So we'll have uh, these things uh, kind of sitting about here, one and two. And then I've got these old brake lines. So what I would need to do is work out which one is the left and which one is the right. I'm pretty sure this this one is the right hand side, sorry, left hand side, and this is the right hand side. So what I'm going to do, I'll basically end up, I'm trying to get these two, these are brake line or inline suppressors. So that's to reduce the amount of hydraulic pressure going to the back brakes. Now, generally you have a 60-40 split or a 70-30 um, split. With the front brakes, because the engine is here and they're disc brakes, these brakes need to do the most work. And the rear brakes are going to do less. Um, and that's just to... Uh, obviously you want, you want the more braking power in the heaviest part of the car, and that would be the nose. Plus, these wheels move while the others are slaves. They basically just drag behind. So, these reduce the amount of pressure going to the rear drums. Apparently they're also supposed to stop lockup, but I think that's an urban legend. I think this is literally, this is going to be baffled inside. I do have a spare one I should try and cut open with a Dremel disc or something just to see what it looks like. But I, I imagine that this is baffled inside to reduce the pressure from the splitter which comes from the master cylinder. So obviously you'll see there's not one in the front. So it'll come from the master cylinder and basically I have a bit of pipe that'll meet up here. And I'm good to go with the front brakes. And then the other one, the bottom one, is going to go all the way around, all the way around, and then meet up here. There's this hole here. I'm, <laughs> I don't think it's meant to be there, but it is. So I'm tempted to feed the brake line through that. There's just a lot of space for it to move, and this is very sharp. I'd have to deburr it. Let's see, I don't, I don't, no, there's not one on that side, so I don't know if it's a good idea. I'll think about it, but probably not. The original ones, the hard lines would just tuck under here, and then the brake line would attach on the inside um, to, to the hard line. So, where was I? All right, so what I'm doing here. The plan is, once these are fixed in place in their final position and everything here is secure, I'm going to unthread this distributor, measure up here, Probably cut a little bit extra, so probably about here, these two bits here. I'll take a Dremel cutting disc, cut one, cut two, and then bend. You know, I'll have to flare, so I need to feed these bolts all the way to the back. Once they're cut, I'll just slide them off and then feed them down. I might put a cable tie here to keep them here in place so that they're easy to get later. So yeah, I'll flare the end so that it looks like that. And then the bolt is basically in place. Good to go. That will then thread into each of these rear suppressors. So, without getting too technical, basically all I want to do... You see there? Yeah, that, that's kind of how we're going to do it. So I could even cut them further. I could cut them about here. But the reason I want to give a little bit of extra slack is because it needs to fit. These things need to go into that little crude retainer there. So a little bit of extra, also for the flaring and that kind of thing. So what I'll do is, I'll cut, I'll practice on the off cut, so I might film that bit, then do this, and then thread it in. So these things luckily do fit into these suppressors, here at the back, and they fit here in the front, which is good because those guys will connect this to this. And then that's the brakes kind of done. Then this sucker comes off, again. <laughs> I'll probably take the hard lines off from here, from the top of these two um, splitters, take the whole thing out again, and then we, 
focus goes back to the engine and the gearbox to put those together and drop them where I'm sitting now. Because obviously, like I said, I want to get this car started. I'm tired of uh, having this thing standing in a million pieces in the garage. I want to get this thing going again. So I want to finish up here with the brakes. It's, it's been long enough. We get this thing done and dusted. Um, get the engine and gearbox mount, uh, you know, all these things cleaned up. Get the engine and gearbox back in here. Get the battery in here, radiator, all the rest of it, water bottles, the whole thing. Get the whole thing connected up. Get the wiring sorted and get the car started. Um, my neighbor's going to love me and so will my tenants because I only have a branch. There's no exhaust or anything. Um, but them's the brakes, right? I need to get the car started so I can make sure that everything's still working. I need to get the old engine oil flushed out of it. I haven't started on the engine yet. I've been focusing on getting all of this finished before we start playing with the engine. So we're making some good, good progress. I know it's very slow, um, but we are making some good progress. Um, this is the closest we've been done. So before this weekend, guys, before this weekend is done, Sunday evening, if I have to stay in here till about 10 o'clock, I'll probably be able to finish this all on Saturday. You know, by Saturday evening, we should all be done. Um, so this will basically be part one of two, or possibly part uh, one of three. Depends how the, uh, the weekend goes. Um, but yeah, these breaks should be done. I'm going to stop now so I can get out of here and I'll just take you into the cabin and show you what I've done there. Cheers for now. And here's one for the keen-eyed observers. You'll see that all the surface rust has now been treated. It's been converted. That's what the black shiny stuff is. That's where the reaction has stopped. So now I can finally, finally, finally clean all this up. Give it a final wipe down. I see I missed one or two spots there so I'll do those before I go upstairs. Also had to do a bit on the firewall, but yeah, so that's finally done. So that means that the soundproofing project can now carry on. I've still got a lot to do. I'm, I'm struggling to get a roller, so I'm going to have to make a plan there. But basically, once the soundproofing is in and the firewall is done and all the rest of it is sorted, that's one more major project complete. I still need to fix that. We know about that. I've told you a million times it needs to happen. I need to change the gear shift lever. So yeah, we are in some ways going forward and in other ways going backwards. Oh yeah, I've just walked past it. Remember this thing? This filthy thing used to sit on the floor there somewhere. I used some Prepsol. I slapped the, this thing onto a sleeper wood section outside. And I just doused it with degreaser. I just let it sit for about an hour and I hosed it off nice and clean. I then doused it again with another. I used, I used the, the bottles of uh, Prepsol. These are 500 mils. This is cheap degreaser. The, the Prepsol I think was, um, I think it was also half a liter. I used two bottles in this gearbox. And basically once I hosed it off, it, it already started looking so good. So I then went over it with um, an old sock just to... Uh, get some of the grime and stuff. You see it's still... I could kind of get away with leaving it exactly like this. I was going to paint it. I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to wire wheel the thing just to uh, clean it up a little bit more but this is kind of basically ready to go on now. Um, the other thing I had to do when I cleaned out the bell housing is I doused the uh, push rod and everything with uh, some Q20 just to stop any surface rust from forming. So you see that this is still dirty, but I'm not going to waste too much time in the bell housing because once the clutch and everything is installed, you're never going to see this again. So yeah, I just, just to prevent some rust because I was hosing this thing down, I nuked this whole thing with Q20 just to keep it, you know, oiled and protected. I still need to clean out the uh, diff cups and things where the CVs go on. I've got new grease, so I'm not too worried about that. But that was an hour's work while I was pottering around with some other stuff. You'll see, uh, I have done some tidying up. I know it doesn't look like much. The Jamie Ore engine is sitting over here. It was going to go over there, but it just it was too crazy to try and maneuver um, you know, the engine crane with the extended legs. So I shuffled this around. I stuck this uh, board against the wall so I can drop the engine down so it doesn't damage the wall. So that's looking good. I'm still going to use this 210 clutch and flywheel. I need to take it off this engine, but that'll wait. 
until uh, everything's ready to go. I don't know what the condition of this clutch is. It looks quite new, um, but we'll see when I take the flywheel off. And then I, I made a stuff up. <laughs> I made a big stuff up. So when I put this thing together, these smaller wheels at the top are meant to go under there, and these bigger wheels are meant to go at the end of these legs. So what's happening now is when there's load in the front, it's tilting forward. Um, and that's because the wheels in the front are too short. So all the weight then shifts forward, and it's, you know, I have to stand on the back to counteract the weight in the front, and then someone has to push me, the crane, and the engine around. So that's not ideal. <laughs> I need to be able to work on this myself. So that's another thing, but I, I want to focus on the brakes first before I do this. I need to lay this thing on its back and swap the wheels around, and then we should be fine. Um, still very happy with this. Very happy with this. I'm going to fit my punching bag soon. And then I need to make a plan on uh, long-term storage. Um, it's kind of fine here. I'm happy with it here. Um, but I would like to put something a hook or something or a raw bolt or something in the wall so I can hang the load level and the hooks up. So we'll make a plan at some stage, but that's again much later. Then I gathered the center console and all the gauges together so that I can get them to a... it's actually an aircraft instrument mechanic or uh, electrician, if you want to call it that. So I'm going to get those fixed, refurbished, tested, new bulbs, everything. I've got a whole bunch in here that I said I was going to do. They're all together. So that can all go. The really keen-eyed people would notice that one of these center consoles is missing. I've flogged that off. Two. I got rid of two consoles, turned that into cash, shoved it in the envelope. I need to clean up this uh, spare water pump that's going in the cupboard. That alternator might just get wrapped up. These two might get wrapped up in the same bag and shoved in the cupboard once they're a little bit clean. I'm not going to waste too much time on them. This box is meant to, this was all stuff that was meant to have gone off to the powder coaters. I haven't done it yet. I need to take an inventory, take some photos. I'm just worried that if they lose something because I have like 30 loose items, I may not remember everything when I leave. So I want to make a little inventory, a little checklist. Uh, this running spare might actually be going. Um, there's a guy who's, who's asking around. Um, he needs it. So we'll see what, what uh, I'm still actually waiting to hear from him. Um, and then yeah, guys, once we are done with the brake lines, these long ones, I'll have to find a uh, place to keep them where they won't get too damaged. And um, that'll become spares along with all of this other stuff. This is the old clutch and flywheel setup. So yeah, I am trying to now get to a point where certain things are not left lying around. I want to start, as things are being installed in the car, it obviously frees up space on the floor. So, excuse me. I'm getting all the rubbers together. Those need to go in. This thing is the next thing I want to do. Once the brakes are done and the engine crane is sorted, I want to redo this thing. Um, put that in the car, then that's one less thing on the floor, like I say. But yeah, we are starting to look good. Um, I do need to uh, get a guy in to sort out a more permanent solution in terms of workspace. So yeah, I'm not going to go too much that that's for a garage update when it actually happens. But yeah, a nice, maybe another set of steel cupboards here and then a work surface all the way to that cupboard. So under all the windows, all the way to there. Then I can put up my whiteboard and a couple of other bits and pieces. I may, if I have time this weekend, want to put some shelves up here. And that's all just to get stuff again off the floor, to get things properly packed and sorted. But let me just show you the, uh, the brake flaring tool before we get out of here. I've got some free advertising there. So basically, I think this is metric. I think it's metric. Three, three eighths of an inch. So you'd put the pipe in here, clamp it down, and then that's sorted. And then you've got this guy. I should actually film this when I'm uh, 
when I'm doing it. So this guy will fit. Where would this guy fit? Well, let's stick him here for the demonstration purpose. Now this thing will wind up. A bit awkward to do with uh, one hand. <laughs> I really need to look at getting a cameraman for these kind of things. But basically, once you've got the unit in place and you've got the right size, it's this thing here that'll flare the brake line out. And then you, there is a little bit of a cleanup. You've got to do some deburring and that kind of thing. I'll see if I can find it. There was a guy who had a very good video on how to do it. Um, I'll see if I can put a link. That's probably one of the worst explanations I've ever done. <laughs> But basically, as, as the pipe makes contact with this round sort of um, dreidel looking thing, <laughs> this will flare the, uh, the pipe out, and these things are basically to give it the shape it needs. So you see, that'll go into the pipe. See there? So the pipe will fit over here, and it'll flare into this little recess as you push it down with this. So that's hopefully a better explanation, but I will give you a, um, a video where a guy explains it properly. And this, this was a worthwhile buy, I think. I know some people don't agree, but um, yes, I'm, I may only use it once. But you never know. Um, I do have another vehicle I'm looking for. And uh, basically, the reason I need all of this stuff for this vehicle, this is an unplanned purchase. This whole brake experience was completely unplanned but uh, life happens and it's forced me to go a certain direction and I need the tools and um, the reason why I want to own my own tools is so that I don't have to borrow from other people some people are like hey yeah borrow my stuff till you actually borrow it <laughs> and then it's a problem uh, you know everyone has a big issue with oh how dare you borrow my stuff even though I return it and I look after it and all the rest of it so I'm just not interested in that whole discussion I buy my own stuff own engine stand, own crane, own tools. I can use it as and when I need to. There's no deadlines. It's just, in the long run, simpler. I've had some uh, negative experiences where people offer to borrow stuff or offer their time and you finally make use of it and then it suddenly becomes a big issue. So I'm not interested in that anymore. I get my own stuff. But basically, I'm paying the school fees on this vehicle now because the next vehicle I build, I'm going to have everything I need from the get-go. So, I do have a vehicle in mind. Um, I have mentioned it in previous, in previous uh, vlogs. Um, it's just uh, finding it. I've, I've gone to look at a couple and the guys want big money for basically rubbish. Um, the vehicles are rotten. They're in worse condition than this thing was when I found it. They're running though, licensed, but no. Um, the next vehicle I buy, I want it to be basically a major service, maybe some cosmetic mods and, you know, a couple of tasteful upgrades that I like to do to my vehicles and then drive it. Um, I, I'm not going to dive into another tear down, sandblast, body repair, respray very quickly unless it's something really, really special. Like a Porsche 356 Speedster, for example. <laughs> That I would give all the time in the world to. I'd throw money at that thing like anything. Um, Porsche 550 Spider, Mickey James Dean type replica. Those kind of vehicles I would do. I may look at doing another two door one day, and that would be. So, so I'm calling this. I started calling this the vehicle I'm going to end up with because what I'm doing now, certain things have forced me in a certain direction. Um, so. This is the end product is going to be what I end up with, but not my original vision. Um, my original vision would have been a different vehicle completely. But uh, you know, I'm happy with this one. It looks great. It's going to look great when it's finished. Hopefully, she drives as well as she looks. And um, you know, I'm hoping that I'll have lots of smiles driving this thing. And I don't want to take away from it. I've always wanted a red two door. Always, always, always wanted a red two door. And there's nothing better than building your own vehicle, let me tell you that. When I finish certain things, 
the, the, the feeling of satisfaction that you get is, is unparalleled to just buying somebody else's project and driving it. Um, that's, that's a, it's, it's an entirely different thing. Um, even if you buy a, a project that's been abandoned, you know, give it a major service, change the battery, change some fluids and off you go. That's, that's minor compared to this. The satisfaction you get from seeing certain things come together is it's unparalleled. It, I really can't explain it other than that. Um, so yeah, I do have a lot of plans for this vehicle, but my short-term goal is to get the thing running. The long-term goal is to get it back on the road and, you know, in weekly use. may not be daily, but at least I want to drive it once a week. Every Friday, guys. Every Friday. I want, to take, I want to start going back to events. I've been out of the car scene for a long, long time. Ever since I sold my, uh, my, my last modified City Golf, my two liter City Golf, which I miss <laughs> a lot lately. Um, yeah, I've been out of the car scene for way too long. So I want to get back in there. Track days, gym corners, breakfast runs, cruising with mates, whatever. And um, I think that's where we're going to leave it. But I still, I love this color. Um, the neon lights and everything, they really don't do it proper justice. I cannot wait for this vehicle to be running so you guys can see it in the sun. Um, and before I do that, I'll, I'll try and white balance the camera properly to try and really, really get this red. This red is amazing in the steel, as I call it. It's, it really is good. And um, yeah, the, these artificial lights and the cameras and, and that sort of stuff, it really doesn't do this car any justice. Um, I did show you guys the, the new cluster I got. I haven't, here's the engine and the, the boxes, the uh, air boxes. I need to still strip one and uh, fix up a few things. I'm missing a very crucial component that I need to find. I may have to fabricate it though, I don't think I'll be able to buy one loose. But that's, uh, that's an issue for another day. <laughs> I'm still a long way from having to worry about that. Um, the engine still has to go in, wiper motor, wiring, the car has to start. You know, uh, there's, there's a long way to go before I have to worry about that. But yeah, it'll be nice to be able to next week, next week is the plan, finish the brakes this weekend, clean up and uh, you know, wipe everything down with some uh, methylated spirits or some thinners, probably mets. Prep the surface for the soundproofing and then peel and stick, peel and stick and then roll out all the air bubbles. Get the floor pan, get the firewall, get all of that sorted. Because, I mean, you'll see there's patches all over the place. I still need to go and finish up. Um, but obviously I don't want to risk running out of this stuff. Doing all the patches in the back while I still have all the front to do and I have to do the tunnels and, and all the rest of that. All of this underneath and then any surplus. Now, I don't have the panel here, but there's a really, really nice, it's also STP. So all my stuff here is STP. Um, it's a really, really big panel. So I want to line the inside of the dashboard skin with um, some soundproofing material as well. And obviously I bought these dog blankets to, to cut to shape on the inside. So once the soundproofing is installed in here as well, and the wiring and everything is in there, we'll just cut the, the shape. Basically what I'm, what I'm trying to do is fill up all the cavities and voids so that there's no squeaking and rattling and, and that kind of thing. Um, obviously if you fill up the cavities, there's nothing to rub together and there's nothing to create that annoying squeak and rattle. So it will be the quietest uh, golf I've ever owned. <laughs> but we'll get there guys, we will get there. And I said my end date, or my on the road date was going to be September for October. Um, I am still pushing to try and make that date. The uh, breakfast run I want to go on with this vehicle is in October. So I may not have a fully completed vehicle, but I don't mind driving on a nice long breakfast run out to Hotter Beer Sport, I think it is, um, with you know just the two front seats in and uh, the rest open. But yeah, once the engine and everything is in, she's off to upholstery. I've sold off a boatload of uh, spares I'm not using to chuck at the uh, interior and yeah we are we are slowly slowly getting there 
slowly, slowly. But anyway, this is now the third time I'm ending the video. <laughs> Let me go and get this thing uh, edited and uploaded. And I'm hoping we'll have a part two and possibly a part three update later this weekend. Um, like I said, I may not be able to film myself doing the work because uh, some of this stuff is very finicky and to try and set up a camera on a tripod is a bit of a pain. But I may have the GoPro on my head. Um, I'm not sure the kind of angles or lighting. During the day we might have some better lighting, but we'll see, we'll see if I can use the footage um, of me doing the work. And then at least, um, you know, we can tick that finally up. I, I must find my, uh, my iPad. We can tick that off the list. The brakes are done. <laughs> All the extra stuff I never expected to do. Brakes are done. Tick. Soundproofing started. Tick. Finished. And then, and then, I've got a date with this thing. It's you and me, my friend. Degreasing, wire brushing, cleaning up. But I've mentioned all of the stuff that needs to happen with that thing in, in previous vlogs, so I'm not going to go through it again. Anyway, cheers for now, guys. Probably see you tomorrow. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more and be kept up to date, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to my channel. With your help, we can get this project complete and move on to the next one. Bye for now.